If you want to skip the intro rant, skip to about 2 minutes, 35 seconds. Over the past couple of years, I've been looking for different ways to cancel out worthless subscriptions that I don't need and take back my privacy from the cloud. Basically, I am unclouding my life. And going down the rabbit hole of self-hosting everything, I started to think, why the hell does my thermostat need to talk to the fucking internet if I'm gonna change the temperature up or down in my house? Why does the app on my phone need to call out to the internet to change the temperature in my house. And why the hell does Ecobee or any of these other big name brand thermostats need to call home? Why do they need to phone home? What kind of data are you trying to track? I read an article about the Google Nest thermostat that has a fucking microphone in the thermostat. Why do you need thermostats with microphones in them? What the hell is going on here? Because if your thermostat is recording your voice, that's fucked up. Then I started thinking about my home security cameras. Why the hell do these need internet access? These things need to be sectioned off, and if I wanna view them remotely, I need a secure VPN back to my house to view my cameras. This doesn't need to be out on the internet. My thermostat doesn't need to be out on the internet. I had an incident with my Roku TV. Uh, well, I've got one of the smart remotes with the microphone in it. And me and my fiance are sitting there and we didn't pick up the remote. We didn't push the microphone on the remote. We didn't accidentally roll over and hit the uh, microphone button. And it started recording us and we saw on the TV the captions of what we were saying. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck is going on? As far as the Roku TV, I really love the Roku interface. So <laughs> being the paranoid guy, you know, doing a little overboard, uh, I just drilled out the microphones on the remotes. <laughs> Record me now, motherfuckers. And then I use my pie hole to block any of the Roku logs going back to Roku. <laughs> but yeah, don't fucking be listening to me. And obviously I changed the operating system on my Android phone. I'm not using stock anything. I don't trust any of these big ass companies especially with all this digital privacy that you see blowing up on the internet where everybody's gonna have to have an ID to access any of their favorite services. I don't, I don't agree with any of that. That's total bullshit, and I hope it doesn't spread from the UK to America because that's just the end of our digital privacy online. Anyways, rant over. Okay, on with the show. I'm gonna get into three pieces of hardware that I replaced that I am now self-hosting, and they do not talk back to the internet unless you want them to. They've got those capabilities. I don't have mine talking back to the internet. It's just on my local LAN. I'm gonna talk about replacing your thermostat, your doorbell camera, and another dome camera for outside your house. I replaced my Ecobee thermostat with the Honeywell Home T9 Wi-Fi Smart Home Thermostat. It supports HomeBridge and it supports Home Assistant. With this, you don't have to have this talking to the internet at all. What's really awesome about having all this self-hosted is when you change the temperature on the thermostat from your phone, it's almost instantaneous. Like you were standing in front of the thermostat changing it right there. There's a very, very short delay. It's not like with my Ecobee, I would change the temperature and it would take anywhere from 30 seconds, maybe a minute to change the temperature. One other great thing about this is if the internet does go out, as long as you're on your home Wi-Fi with your phone, it's still gonna work. With my Ecobee, if the internet had an outage, you can't do that anymore. Or with any smart thermostat or any of these smart devices that you're not controlling locally, the internet goes out and you're at your home and you just wanna access it from your phone, you can't do that with any of these devices unless you self-host them. Then you can get around that problem. That's just another great perk of self-hosting these devices. The next piece of hardware that I replaced was my video doorbell. I used to have Alarm.com as the provider for my service for my doorbell camera and a couple of my other home security cameras. And I was paying a monthly subscription fee for this. And I'm like, I have an as, I have a home server, I've got plenty of storage space. Why the fuck am I paying a monthly subscription to access this? And on top of that, you don't know if they're patching their firmware correctly. You can't get into their devices. Everything they have from alarm.com is locked down. So I'm like, yeah, no thanks. Um, I'm gonna buy new hardware and I'm gonna self host this and make sure everything is secure on my network. The doorbell that I ended up going with was the RioLink Video Doorbell Wi-Fi Camera. This allows you to record to your NAS or to a shared folder via FTP. It also has a micro SD slot on it. What I really like 
about Reolink is that it didn't require me to sign up for their service, for their app on the mobile phone, so you could scan a QR code and get the doorbell on your Wi-Fi during the setup process. They didn't require me at any time to sign up for their bullshit mailing letter or register the device online through their tracking system. There, there was none of that. You just download the app, scan a QR code, it hooks up to your Wi-Fi, and then it's in your hands. You can either join it to the internet, you can use their service, they do have an online service you can use, or you can self host Post everything and completely turn off the gateway on it so it has zero internet access. It's just on your local LAN and that's it. Also, whenever you pull up the camera, since everything's on your local LAN, you turn on the app and that thing fires up almost instantly. With Alarm.com, I'd turn on my app because someone would ring my doorbell and I'm like, oh, is that someone just trying to do some kind of door-to-door -door sales or whatever? And I would try to open up the app and it would take a minute sometimes to load the video. So it was completely worthless. But with this, I turn on the app or I open up my Home Assistant app and it's almost instantly loaded. It's, it's really great, it's really fast, very snappy. I really enjoy it. And on the same subject of cameras, the next thing I replaced was my outdoor dome cameras. I've got a couple around my property. I ended up sticking with the same brand because I was so impressed with the doorbell camera and how easy the app was and how easy it was to use the FTP service to go back to a shared folder on my home network. So I ended up going with the dome camera, Reolink RLC 1240A. It is a 12 megapixel camera and it does support power over ethernet. And just like the doorbell camera, this has the same awesome Reolink app that doesn't require an internet connection, but it also supports Home Assistant. So I can use either app, you know? So if you're like even paranoid about the app, you don't have to use their app. You could use just Home Assistant. It's 100% open source and everyone knows what the hell is going on with the code if you dig into the code. The camera picture quality on this is phenomenal. The, the night mode, the day mode, crystal clear 4K high def video. This also does support an SD card as well. So if you did have your server reboot or your NAS reboot, or for some reason there was a problem with one of your hard drives, this also, just like the doorbell camera, has a micro SD slot that it can fall back on while it's recording. So you never miss anything. So that's it for the hardware in this video. I hope it saves y'all some time and research because you know, trying to find stuff that you can self-host that works with Home Assistant and it's going to work with HomeBridge and it's going to work with FTP or a NAS or any of that. Some of these companies, they are very, very sparse with the paperwork and details. And then you get into online reviews or get into forums and you can't get a straight answer from anybody until you just kind of have to be a guinea pig, buy the product, test it out. If it didn't work, you got to send it back. I went through several different brands. Finally and luckily, I came across these gems, little, little diamonds in the rough. So that's it for this video. Have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.